Hello, my name is Samuel Spies. I'm an applications engineer at Liquid Instruments, and in this video, we'll go through an application of MochaGo's PID controller. The goal of this application is to visually show the tuning process of a closed loop system by controlling the height of a ping pong ball in a closed tube. This project is great for control systems courses because it brings an interactive lab element to a typically theory heavy course, and the visual aid of the ball height helps connect the theory and lecture to practice in the field. Before jumping into the application itself, I want to quickly review the theory of operation behind this project. The main components being used here are a MochaGo M2, which has four programmable power supplies, a 5 volt DC fan, an IR sensor, the PCB control board, and the ball and tube, which is our system, or plant. The MochaGo is acting as our power supply to power the PCB and the fan, an oscilloscope to read in the sensor signals, a PID controller to implement the control system, and a waveform generator to generate the control signal to the driver system. The driver system on the PCB is generating a PWM signal to a FET that is controlling the power to the fan. This PWM signal is generated by a comparator which has a ramp waveform on the inverting input and the control signal from Mokugo's PID controller on the non-inverting input which controls the PWM's duty cycle. The potentiometer here is used to set the desired ball height and is read by input 1 of the MokuGo, and feedback from the system is generated by the IR sensor, which is read by here by input 2 of the MokuGo. Here is a block diagram of the system showing the MokuGo's reading in two sensor signals on ADC1 and 2, sums these two signals, and generates a control signal to the DAC based on the implementation of the PID controller. This signal controls the PWM waveform, which is controlling the speed of the fan. Now that we understand the setup of this demo, let's first look at the open loop response of this system to get an idea of how it operates. First, I need to connect to my MokuGo, which I'm going to do by connecting to its integrated Wi-Fi hotspot. Once connected, I'm going to open the PID controller. MokuGo's PID controller also integrates an oscilloscope, a data logger, and a four-channel programmable power supply. To start, I'm going to just use the integrated oscilloscope and power supplies. So to power and monitor the plant, I'm going to enable power supply 1 to power the PCB and power supply 3 to power the fan. Now to view the open loop step response of the system, I don't want to have any feedback from the IR sensor, so the control matrix should be 1, 0. Then I want to enable the proportional gain of the PID controller to 0 dB. This setup is essentially just a set point tracker, but it allows me to change the height of the ball using the set point potentiometer to choose the height that I want to view the step input response at. Now I'm going to set up a few tracking cursors so that we can see the potentiometer and IR sensor changes in the oscilloscope as well. The set point potentiometer is input 1, or channel A in red and the IR sensor is input 2, or channel B, in blue. Now that the controller is set up, let's measure the open loop step response. Each of these markings on the tube are 20 millimeters apart, with the lowest mark denoting the 0 millimeter mark since it is at the top of the ball. I'm measuring the height from the top of the ball because this is what the IR sensor sees first. I'm going to set the ball height to about 120 millimeters. Now each controller has a digital switch that allows me to turn the DAC on and off, but keep the controller running. Since this system is relatively slow, I will need to set up the scope to be able to properly capture the step response. So I've increased my time base significantly and enabled the normal trigger mode for an easier signal capture, and then adjusted the trigger level. Once I've captured the step response, I can pause the scope and make some measurements using either the draggable cursors or the automatic measurements for rise time and overshoot. Next, let's look at a very common tuning method of a closed loop system. First, to set up our PID controller, we need to normalize the range of the potentiometer, the IR sensor, and the sawtooth generator. The scope shows the sawtooth is about 1.6 volts peak to peak, so we need to scale the potentiometer and IR sensor to that range using the control matrix. The 1.65 volt offset from the sawtooth will be my output offset. Next, I'll scale the potentiometer to the 1.65 volt peak-to-peak -peak range using the control matrix, and leave the IR sensor scaling the same since it already matches the sawtooth range. Although I wouldn't be making it negative since it should be a negative feedback system. 
The input offset should keep the summation above zero volts at max height so that there is no negative input to the controller. This will require looking at the IR sensor's datasheet graph to make sure that the correct range is selected. Now to set up the scope with a few tracking cursors to track the mean voltages of the IR sensor and the set point potentiometer and my controller is set up and ready for closed loop tuning. Now let's get to the fun part, the real-time interactive tuning. First, I want to enable the proportional gain to 0 dB and change the set point to whatever I want my initial ball height to be. Here it is 40 millimeters. Now I'm going to increase the proportional gain until the system starts to oscillate. This can be done by dragging the proportional gain slider here on the transfer function graph. Now that the ball is oscillating, let's enable the differential gain and adjust it until the oscillations have decreased again using the sliders on the graph. What's nice about this implementation of the PID controller with the magnitude transfer function graph is that you can see how sliding the, the gains across the screen on the graph affects the system physically as well as mathematically. Now that the oscillations have stopped, I'm going to enable the integrator gain and integrator saturation level so that the system does not saturate. Lastly, I just want to adjust the proportional gain down until the ball is at its original set point height, which is the 40 millimeter line. While I finish the fine tuning of the controller in the background, I want to point out another great use case for the Mokugo's PID controller in the classroom, which is that students can easily translate the interactive magnitude graph to a transfer function equation simply by taking the integrator and differentiator crossover frequencies and plugging them into the standard equation as a pole and as a zero, respectively. For example, this would be the transfer function equation for this controller. Now that I have the ball height back to 40 millimeters, I want to point out that this method does give decent tuning parameters to start with, however they are not perfect for every case with this system. Here we can see that when I adjust from the low level to the high level that the system reacts well. However, there are multiple points in the center of the system that causes it to become unstable. Here's a common table that identifies how an increase in a specific gain affects the system. Using this table along with trial and error testing against a set of system requirements is a good way to learn one way of tuning a PID controller. The Book of Go makes this process better by providing an interactive transfer function plot that shows how changing certain gains changes the controller in the frequency domain and allows straightforward extraction of poles and zeros from the PID controller that can be used for further modeling or transfer function equations. Finally, I want to show what a well-tuned response for this closed-loop system looks like. I used the table previously to increase the response time, reduce overshoot, and reduce steady-state error and oscillations. Even with extensive trial and error tuning, the system still is not perfect, as you can still see there is some small oscillations at certain points in the system. This MoCoGo project makes for a great teaching tool since it relates control theory directly to a physical system, but also shows the limitations of manual tuning. This project is available for download on our website and includes all the 3D print design files, PCB schematic, BOM, and Gerber files, as well as an application note that can be used as a PID controller tuning lab if desired. Thank you for watching and feel free to check out more Mokugu videos on the Liquid Instruments YouTube page.